Happy Sunday. It's Screenplay Sunday. Uh, GB is uh, joining us once again. G'day, GB. Oh, g'day, Josh, and g'day, everyone. How, how are you? <laughs> With uh, special guest Simon Taylor. Wow, that, that stock footage at the start would have been expensive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, you can thank GB for that. That's where all the budget went, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yes, it wasn't even stock footage. I believe it is a, um, a photograph that has a slight Ken Burns effect. Wow, um, that's, that's real budget. <laughs> uh, Simon, uh, thank you for uh, for being on Screenplay Sunday for the first time. You've obviously been on right. the Daily Talk Show uh, before. Uh, have you ever been in a table read before? No, I don't think so. I did some plays in high school, but I was always, yeah, I was always like, some random character that maybe has one line. So this is a big moment for me is what I'm saying. Okay, great, great. Uh, great. The writer's room. Well, then again, I don't know my role yet, so maybe I'll be <laughs> yeah, no, as a single line guy, yeah. You will be surprised. I mean, the right, you've been in the writer's room before. What Can you give us uh-huh. some uh, idea of what a writer's room is like? Because we, we obviously do writing, but we've never done it in a room mm. before well, together. Well, I... I've had three different writers' rooms experiences. One with Jay Leno, that was just send jokes directly to Jay. So we, no one ever discussed it. I'd just, you know, sit in my bedroom, read the news, write the jokes, send it to Jay. And if he liked it, he used it. So that was pretty straightforward. Uh, for Sean McAuliffe, it was a room of maybe six of us and we're all at our laptops. And all we ever really discussed was who wanted a cup of tea. So <laughs> we we occasionally would say... We'd occasionally discuss like legislation or we'd discuss like the details of something, but we'd never really throw ideas around. We'd write our own script and then hand it to Sean. And then the last one was for Netflix, uh, Magic for Humans on Netflix. And that was a that was a writer's room like you see in like 30 Rock and whatnot, like donuts on the table, um, you know, soda water and people pitching things and i hated that because the really like verbose aggressive speakers would like you have to fight for your ideas Mm -hmm. so it wasn't enough to have a good idea you had to be louder than the other dudes so those are the three those are the three models you can work with basically is there is there that many ideas going on in one of those rooms because like i can't imagine Mm. it being like eight hours of like shouting or is it (laughs) or is there a lot of like silence of just like no, I've still got nothing. No, else. <laughs> in the last one, yeah, you. I mean, you got to come, and people are riffing off each other. Some someone will say like, "Hey, for Halloween, why don't we do like a zombie thing?" And someone will go, "Vampires are more popular. Let's do vampires." And they go, "No, I think zombies are." In. And they go, no, "No, no, no, vampires because." And so you'll have that for three hours, and then we never do that segment like that. All <laughs> yeah. yeah, it kind of plays out like that. Well, wow. and so uh, well, Grace has been uh, the head of the the writer's room today uh, and there was no one else in there so she's written the whole thing uh, <laughs> no Grace, arguments there was, no one, there was one other person <laughs> <laughs> did did sevs how did mr 97 no, help or no what happened he didn't oh a little bit but i was just throwing ideas at him and he was like yeah no nah, yeah like you know <laughs> i mean <laughs> not, not really helping mason, but yeah <laughs> mason isn't the the sort of the ideas guy. Yeah, I mean that, that's called a focus group. <laughs> yeah, so. well, I was I would say ideas, and then he wouldn't laugh, and I was like, okay, well that's not funny. I won't use that. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, Mason uh, is uh, the producer on uh, One Trick Tony. Uh, mm-hmm. Mason, can you say your the, the thing that you were talking when it comes to comedy? Uh, Simon, Mason doesn't really know that much about comedy, but you had a very strong opinion. You had a very strong opinion about someone who you thought wasn't funny. Who who is it that you don't think is funny, Mason? Adam Sandberg. Not funny. Andy. 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 (laughs) Adam Sandberg is hilarious. Andy Sandberg. But Adam Sandberg. I I love all all his movies. (laughs) Adam Sandberg. <laughs> is that Adam yeah, Sandler Andy. and Andy Sandberg's kid? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, don't, I don't like Adam Sandler either, so yeah. I'm sure there will be a Andy movie Sandberg. in 10 years' time where they, like, merge bodies and do, like, yeah. a, a CGI yeah. version. That sounds like something they would do. Um, Andy Sandberg, com- yep. You know, Mason yeah. knows comedy. 
Yeah, Andy Samberg does. I, he has a very particular kind of broy style of comedy. Mm-hmm. Like you know, it, he's not so much a punchline dude. He's more just like a personality. So if you don't like his personality, then you don't like his comedy. But mm. uh, there are other other comics who are actually write have like clearly written punchlines that you know a lot more people will laugh at. So Andy Samberg, yeah, he was in a good movie though called Palm Springs recently that was really good so maybe that watch that film yeah maybe watch that film that was pretty enjoyable yeah yeah brooklyn 99 is just not doing it for me not funny <laughs> the crimes aren't severe enough like everything's so light-hearted they they it's never so come in and go so there's a serial killer on the loose like it's just like some guy mm. stole a pastrami sandwich oh <laughs> But there is yeah, like a pop- NCIS or like there's other shows that are probably more suited to what you're after, Simon. Yeah, but <laughs> not with uh, Jake Peralta comedy, not with that Adam <laughs> Sandberg <laughs> champagne humor. <laughs> uh, Mason, do you think that are you a um, uh, uh, what were the two versions, Simon? You can either be a lines guy or you can be a you can be a punchline guy or a what was the other one? Personality. 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 A character, no, yeah. What I'm definitely have? a lines guy. I love a good punchline, yeah. Okay. Not <laughs> personally. Bor- but- Borat. Borat's probably a, more of a character mm-hmm. because he doesn't necessarily have punchlines, but he just does ridiculous things and he says things in – like very nice isn't a punchline, but the way he says it, it's hilarious. <laughs> so that's an, that's an example of a personality guy. Okay, great. Well, so I was uh, running through some of the um, – I got the – the Seinfeld book the other day with all of his oh, me too. jokes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just running through a few of them with, with the housemates and wasn't translating well for me. <laughs> like, did you do the voice? About, nah, just did my own voice, which I don't know, maybe <laughs> that's not funny. Try it with a voice. <laughs> Can you read well, GB? Do you think that was <laughs> nah, I really wasn't. <laughs> it's terrible. Just saying the wrong words. I mean, I feel like I would absolutely butcher that. Uh, yeah, if, if you I try, to do Josh. It. Uh, Simon, so the way Screenplay Sunday works is uh, obviously uh, one of us writes a script today. It's Grace and uh, we all have uh, a role to play. We needed to bring some more industry uh, sort of thought into the piece and so GB comes up with an interesting industry fact. Uh, GB, yep. what's today's industry fact so the good facts today, uh, on this day in 1997, Titanic premiered. Mm. Uh, there you go. There the you go, in Tokyo. The awesome. film. <laughs> the film. And got a couple of other ones. Uh, we I like to go through a divorce of interest. So <laughs> Martin Scorsese divorces Isabella Rosalini after three years of marriage in 1982. Oh, wow. That's a good one. Another, yeah, that's another. And another divorce of interest, Charlie Sheen. Divorced uh, Brooke Mueller. Wow. Potentially. He divorced so, Brooke GB, Mueller does this mean that the this is the date that it was filed? Good question. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> the they announced filed or I assume the, so. It's probably like... Or is it the actual, like, the... Finalised. Yeah, 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 I don't, yeah, I don't, I don't know yeah. the specifics of it because like, you have to be separated first, GB. <laughs> uh, look, uh, as a divorce of interest headline. guy, GB. Yeah, what? Do you mean? <laughs> I, think, I think there's different laws in different states. So, GB, what state specifically can you recite the law? Too many questions. And then we too can many go questions. From there. <laughs> Charlie Sheen divorced Brooke Mueller on this day uh, after I- I- irreconcilable differences. Mm-hmm. And after two and a half years of you should read yeah. some jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Sorry, that was I thought these were my best facts. One more fact. Uh, happy birthday to Tony Collette. Ah, oh, it's Tony. I've enjoyed all of them this this week, George. So thank you for um, coming was, to us with great people facts. that we know. Yeah, oh, thank you, thank you. <laughs> uh, no, that was really good. And so, uh, good work, GB. Can we find out for next week? My hands are sweaty. <laughs> yeah. My arms are heavy. Good Eminem reference, uh, GB. Can we? Um, uh, next week, can you find out about that divorce stuff? Because I am interested. Is it a specific website? Yeah, so what do you want to know? I just want to know, like, because you're so, the idea was that it was connected to the day that we're recording. Yeah. Has, has it got, like, a bunch of dates next to the divorces? Mm-hmm. Is that what you're doing? No, no. So I just type in a date. So this date was November 1. Mm-hmm. 
and it just comes up with like birthdays, weddings, film premieres. It's also Mr. 97s, but it's yeah, it's, 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 it's <laughs> Mason's birthday as well. That's very true. It is oh, you should have led with that, George. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I if, got if the twice now. Uh, <laughs> balloon wasn't enough. Uh, he's, he's getting his. Whole I've got show a sign. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah it is so, Mason's birthday today. And so now what we do is uh, we have the assignment. Have you got the script in front of you? Can you see it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Perfect. And so uh, what we do is, Grace, can you tell us the title of the script, and then Simon will get you to guess what the premise is. Oh, okay. So, sure. So today's script is called The Fiery Fans. Okay. This is going to be hard very no hard context. for you, Simon, because <laughs> you haven't heard any of the other scripts and we don't do sort of recaps. So this Fiery is Fans. <laughs> yes. Mm-hmm. So, uh, so this is a long-running series, like the same characters? Good question, GB. Yeah, yes, uh, yeah look, it is. These recaps it are is. going well, George. Do we just do you one didn't seem fully just... confident in that answer. Like, yeah, look, it is like we're trying to, but it doesn't. The always... idea, the original idea was yeah. that at the end of this series we'd have a feature film. Uh, oh, so that's yes, cool. It is a, it's mm. a continuation on. It's a scene. I haven't by read scene, the script either. Yeah. But, okay. it's a scene have, but we only have three more episodes before the end of the season. It's a short gonna... film. Yeah, Harry fans, real short. So, sh- should we give him a recap? I mean, oh, well, do I have no, to I guess what fiery what fans mean? Without it, yeah, yeah. I yeah just, well, just, just have it. Yeah. Fiery fan. I don't think it's like fan as in like a you know the machine fan. fan I think it's fire. like fan like a gr- like a groupie or like a um like like I don't know like boy band type fan. Like so, fiery mm-hmm. fans like angry angry fans. Maybe it's about cancel culture or something. But something fa- like fandom. Yeah. Oh, I like angry I fans. Okay, yeah, angry, it. angry, yeah, angry fans of something. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Well, uh, we'll get straight into it. Uh, okay. Grace, can you let us know who's playing who and uh, who's reading the big print, please? Sure thing. So, uh, Jess, you're playing Alex. Simon, you're, you are playing Archie. George, you're playing Mark. Mm-hmm. Josh, you're Bob and the announcer, and you're also big print. Uh, this is oh, no. jump. <laughs> so, jo- wow. so Josh has got Josh has got three Bob and, and his and 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 no, 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 no. This is too much. <laughs> the announcer only has one line, so don't worry. Da- um, Mason, you're Dale, and I'm Wendy. Um, yeah. Did you use any yeah. big words? No big words. I think you. I think I think I avoided big words today, Josh. I think just you're for fine. you, Josh. Just for okay. you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Are we all, so are we all good? Mm hmm. Yep. Yeah, so I'm okay. Bob, oh. the announcer in Big Print. Yes. What is it, Jess? Wait, where the hell's Dale? I'm Dale. Dale. Mason's Dale. Oh, oh okay. okay. I didn't hear the okay. name. Dale Did and Wendy are still there. Okay. Oh, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> we nearly okay. lost the main character. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Dale off. All right. So here we go. Uh, I'm reading the Big Print. Uh, yeah, well. Grace, you've got your your personal email address on the, <laughs> on the thing. I know. Oh, don't read that I out. I won't read that out. <laughs> but... Um, so here we Why go. I Thanks for surprise. Surprise! You, <laughs> surprise! She didn't put our address on there as yeah. well. Not we can put, we can give you an alias email, so we'll we'll set that up. Uh, the fiery fans, written by Grace Paris, PO Box four hundred Abbotsford, Victoria three zero six seven. Grace at bigmediacompany.com. <laughs> <laughs> Interior: Bob's Banter Barber Shop, twenty twenty AFL Grand Final Day. All right. Mm-hmm. Dale and Archie are sitting. Next to each other, getting their hair cut. Archie panic, is Josh. wearing his Geelong. I, uh, just let me be. be My mouth's energy. dry. Archie is wearing his Geelong cat's gear. <laughs> Dale's barber, Alex, is wearing her Richmond Tigers top and scarf. Dale, mate, I'm pumped for the footy today. The cat are going to bring it home, not only for us fans, but for the little bald man who is retiring today. Bob, who do you go for? Bob is looking serious and stern. I do not follow the football. Look, you're a hirsute guy. Please, just let me focus on your hair. (laughs) Today. So much for a banter, Barber. Tigers are going... 
for three and four years. We've got this in the bag. Dusty is on form. The whole team is on form, actually. A colleague of mine hosts an annual grand final party, so I'm glad the game is at night this year so we can get a full day's work in before the celebrations. I'm off to the in-laws after this. They hold an annual party as well, but I just can't get into the game. Archie starts to look agitated angrily. The Tigers have had their day. Dusty is overrated, and if he wins the Norm Smith, this haircut will be for nothing because I'll be shaving my bloody head. Alex looks confusingly at Archie. Dale also looks confused. How is Dusty overrated? He finished fourth in the Brownlow and received more votes than any Cats players. Mate, you just need to relax. Arch, relax. No, I'm pissed off that it's not even in Victoria this year. Queensland, they're a rugby state. They they don't even like football. I'm done with 2020 and I'm sick to death of Tiger fans. I'm sorry, this reaction is unacceptable. I think you need to calm down. Bob puts his scissors down. Out! Out of my barber shop now! Only half our heads have been cut. You can't kick us out now. It's Bob's banter barbershop. I am Bob and therefore I can do what I want. Wherever I, wherever this is, it is the opposite. Whatever this is, I should say, it is the opposite of banter. And you will not treat my staff like this. Archie storms out of the barber. Dale pays for both haircuts. So sorry, have a great day. Go the Tigers? Thanks, Bob. I appreciate that. Some people, hey? Mm, this is meant to be a silent bar, but I really need to change that sign. Interior, <laughs> Wendy's parents' house. Early evening. Wendy and her father, Mark, are preparing the lounge room with snacks and drinks. Honey, uh, everything is almost ready. What time is Dale coming over? Ah, uh, he should be over any minute now. He went with Archie to get a haircut and said they would stop off at the shops to get some snacks. I also think Samantha said she'll be over during the second half. She's with Gerald's family now and will prob- probably bring some hot dogs. <laughs> Classic Samantha. I cannot wait to catch up with her and Gerald. There is a knock at the front door. Alex has used makeup to make her face look like a tiger. Alex, you're the first one here. Wow, that makeup is great. Almost looks like a Halloween costume. Oh, hi, Mark. It's been a day. (laughs) (laughs) Let me tell you, I thought I would add to the atmosphere and follow Gemma Watts' tiger makeup tutorial. Who the bloody hell is that? No, that's not part of the line. (laughs) I was going to dress as myself for Halloween. Because, you know, my life is pretty scary. Wendy winces at the awful joke. (laughs) Wendy, this is Alex. She does some freelance consulting work at the company. She is brilliant. You should chat to her for your business. Hey, Alex. Wow, you look great. Let's go grab a drink. Wendy and Alex walk to the dining room. The front door opens and Dale and Archie walk in. We are Geelong, the greatest team of all. Dale, Archie, how are you? The haircuts are looking interesting. Oh, hi, Mark. (laughs) It's been an interesting morning. Archie's love for the cats got him in some hot water this morning. Look, I'm a passionate guy. This barber, though, she was equally as passionate as I was, just for another team. Dale notices Alex and Wendy in the dining room behind Archie. Dale puts his hand in his head. Oh, no. Oh, what? Alex and Wendy walk into the lounge room. Alex looks shocked. Really? You're here? Wendy looks at Dale with a confused look. What? What's going on? Dale, honey, the hair looks uneven. Um, meanwhile, there was, there was a little altercation at the bar this morning. 
and this guy basically went off at me about how much he loves the cats. Wouldn't agree to disagree. Bob had to throw him out. You were mouthing off about the cats. Tommy Hawkins is a legend. No, I wasn't. I am not denying the talent, but let's just be adults about it. Mark steps in between Alex and Archie. Right! This is my house! And I will not stand for this. Archie, sort yourself out and act like an adult. Alex, don't fall for his BS. And Dale... Mark pauses and looks around. Can someone please sort out that hair? Archie looks stunned and walks into the kitchen. Dale gives Wendy a confused look. Alex, are you okay? Dale, can you just go please make sure Archie is okay? I just don't understand these people who can't just agree to disagree. I mean, I, th- I think it's all the adrenaline being allowed out and it's now getting to Archie. J- Archie. Just a little bit excited, but probably not dealing with it in the best way. <laughs> Alex walks into the kitchen to speak to Archie. Cut to kitchen. I think we need to sort this out. A rivalry is good. It's healthy. Mark has been so generous, so let's just put this to bed for his sake. I agree. I'm sorry. It's been a while since I had any um, social interaction. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so will you stand by your words and shave your head if Dusty wins the Norm Smith? I will. And you can do the honours. Cut to lounge room. Dale, I'm really worried about Archie. The hot-headed behaviour is so unlike him. I know, I know. Let's just get through today and we can talk about him tomorrow. It's been a tough time for everyone. Alex and Archie walk back into the lounge room. The game is about to start. May the best team win. I look forward to getting the razors out. Cut to end of the game. Yes, Tigers! And the Norm Smith medal goes to Dustin Martin. (laughs) Alex turns the razor on. Archie looks worried. Football was the real winner today. Fade to black. (laughs) Great work. Well done, Grace. The, um, oh, hi, really Mark. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, that is a reference from, uh, the, is it The Room? Is it the Room. The room, it the yeah. room. It's a, it's a great film. Jess, you haven't seen it, have you? Nope. You've got to see it. It's very... Uh, just watch yeah. the never, Oh, hi, Mark bit on YouTube. Yeah, I've never That's seen it. I've just seen the Oh, hi, Mark bit so many times, so I thought oh. I'd bring mm. it in there. It's worth watching the uh, James Franco movie on it. It's pretty, it's Definitely. like behind the scenes of how it was made. Oh. Yeah, so it's all in oh, that. That's cool. Oh, that's cool. It's really funny. That's, awesome. that's really, that's, that's, that's watchable. No. <laughs> Wait, is it actually about, it's, is it behind the scenes as in as it was being produced or after the fact? Like, is it? No, it's a, it's a, it's like a, a dramatization of it. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's, you know, yeah. So he's, James he's, Franco yeah, dresses written. up as the main characters, Tommy Wiseau mm-hmm. and yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah. And his Grace. brother's in it as well. Grace, it's, I think you yeah. did a great job. That was very, that was great, very, Grace. very good. <laughs> um, yeah, round of My applause again. My pounds are also sweating. <laughs> <on TV. laughs> yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. Did we do it justice? Did I any, okay, did can I, we get our re- performance reviews now? One at a time. I think everyone did actually really well, did really well to be honest. Um, George, right. honourable mention for the accent. Mm-hmm. Really, I, right. know, I wasn't confident. When, when uh, I was started, actually. Re- I loved it. The I was regretting doing well. it. The yelling and came through yelling, really yeah. well, GB. Oh, good. And then I like the the real blokiness that you um, brought Simon to Archie. Comes that's the natural. That's that's yeah. my normal <laughs> self. Yeah. The real yeah. like footy vibe. Yeah. You're a footy guy. <laughs> Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, Simon, how much planning goes into your comedy shows? You've got uh, f- the Fringe Festival show coming up. What's 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 involved? Uh, you put tickets on sale, and <laughs> you hope you don't get bad reviews. Uh, no, I, 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 you. Okay, this is interesting because usually you set a show, and then I'll do a bunch of gigs every night in the lead up to try material because with stand up at least you're you know you say a joke it's basically what grace did you say a joke if it doesn't get a laugh you get rid of that one mm-hmm. and then you're basically culling your way into a good show so you might write i don't know a, a, um three hours worth of jokes and you cut it down to the best 50 minutes 
but I haven't had a chance to do that. So this year is going to be very, let's say, experimental uh, <laughs> because I'll just have to write a lot of it at home and try it on my partner. And, or maybe I could try it on, on your partner, Grace. Man, he sounds like really ruthless. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I he, he knows yeah, comedy. He knows <laughs> comedy. So, so uh, yeah, usually I do a new show every year, but, uh, yeah, I had to come up with a new show a bit faster this year. And um, so it's virtual. Does that mean you're mm-hmm. go- are you going to hear people laughing? I'd like to get some feedback, yeah, but I'll, I'll, I'll do it more like a TV show just because okay, yeah, sure. I'll have more, like, uh, if you can't hear laughter, because sometimes laughter is a, it helps with timing. Mm-hmm. So you hear a laugh and then you know the next the timing for the next joke or timing for the punchline. So on TV what they do is they have sound cues uh, to compensate for that. So if you can have a sound cue or a video cue or a visual thing, uh, like that amazing title, like that was like, poor, <laughs> that was set the tone for hilarity. So I'm using a different toolkit to try and make uh, a show this year. Yeah. And so it's actually the Melbourne Fringe Festival, is it? And and Yeah, Melbourne Fringe Festival, a broadcast mm-hmm. live from Trades Hall. Oh, great. And so, so, mm-hmm. it will be, so you will be there doing it live and then people can get tickets to watch it virtually? Yeah. 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 Great. Oh, very cool. Um, yeah, it's pay what you feel uh, just right. in case it's... Uh, oh, GB's interesting. You have to pay up front. But, yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh, yeah. GB's always feeling tight if you want to... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so are you saying are that you you'll get it? cues on stage like when you're telling the jokes because you won't be able to hear the audience laughing? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I think uh, I might be able to have some of the audience, in, like I'll have a headset, so I might be able to hear some of them, but there'll be a delay. So I'd rather just have like a tight show with like, you know, if I finish a segment, there's a music cue or something like that. I've just got to use a different okay. set of tools like in, like TV does. So it's not dissimilar to like, I don't know, Funniest Home Videos uses silly sounds, so I'm basically mm-hmm. doing that. Have you been watching yeah. any of the uh, the late night talk shows? Mm. What have you noticed about them all being remote? There's something nice about um, seeing into their lives and their personality. And I just like that celebrities look pretty normal, like they don't have anything on us. Like you see into their house, you go, that's their house? That's a Kmart <laughs> clock. Like that's <laughs> – like, I, I quite like that. So it, it – if the per- if the actual celebrity or the the host is an endearing person, then I think it worked out for them. But if they rely on the fanfare of the production to make them look good, that was apparent too. So there are some celebrities I like more now, and there's some celebrities I'm like, you are you're, you're all you're all showbiz. You're not mm-hmm. like a genuine you know uh, 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 entertainer. Who did it best? Do you think? I like Fallon's. I thought Fallon's family was super cute. I like um, Colbert's. Um, yeah, there's a couple who struggled. Uh, I think just because they're like uber rich and they they're in their like fancy house <laughs> and they're just well, all of them. But yeah, I don't know. Some have been rich a bit too long. The older ones. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Mm. Well, uh, it's screenplay Sunday. Grace, great job. Uh, once you. again, and so this is episode seven. So we're planning on getting to episode ten before we will have some form of finale. Uh, which uh, it's you know it's all coming together. I can see the narrative. I can see how it's all playing out. It all makes perfect sense. And, um, <laughs> What's going to happen with Archie's hair by next episode? Yeah. Yeah. Is it a wig? Does he turn to wigs? Is it a wig shopping scene? Could be. Don't, don't give too many yeah, ideas no. away. Yeah. <laughs> um, thank you, Simon, for coming on the podcast. Hey, thanks for having me. This was super fun. I love this. this well, um, uh, grab a sandwich because otherwise uh, they will go to waste. There's some, a really nice one. There's a tuna and salad one, which right. I would really recommend. Yeah. Um, and feel free to take also the cans uh, of drink as well because I don't want to have to carry them back to the car. Otherwise, uh, enjoy your Sunday, everyone. <laughs> Happy birthday, uh, Mr. 97. Uh, thank you, Simon. Make sure you get uh, tickets. Where can people get tickets to uh, the Fringe show? Uh, you can go melbournefringe.com.au and, uh, yeah, look up my show. Simon Taylor, why is grandma racist? <laughs> That's a really good question. <laughs> Catch you guys. Have a good one. <laughs>